My name is Noah Smeisner. Uh, I'm a college student going to K-State uh, University in Kansas. And I'm a sophomore there studying business finance and economics. And then I'm also interested in German. Uh, I'm a juggler, primarily a numbers juggler. That's kind of my favorite thing to do, more so than creative and like artistic and performance based. But I would like to get uh, more interested in doing that and maybe performing soon. Uh, I used to practice a lot more. Now that I'm in college, it's a little bit less. Um, this semester, I can usually get in at least uh, three days a week at two to three hours. Um, I'd be happy with that. Some days it's four days a week. Sometimes I can get in a nice four hour practice. Um, so that's what our, I'm kind of at right now. I used to get a practice every day for two to three hours a day. Uh, I never got into a phase of like six to eight hours a day for like months. I've never got like super serious about that. But if I could, I would practice probably two to three hours a day every day. But school just doesn't quite allow that to you and work. It's harder. My warm up's probably one of the worst warm ups out of most of the jugglers I know. Um, pretty much, I just get out three props and kind of mess around, get creative, do stuff I've never really practiced before, kind of just warming up my arms. First off, you should stretch. I don't stretch as much as I should. Just some basic arm and shoulder stretches. Um, but after probably about 20 minutes of three props that I mess around with, I pick up a fourth for probably only two minutes. I'm not super interested in like low numbers. I said earlier I was a technical juggler. So five is kind of where I'm at right now. Uh, just practicing basic side swaps. Uh, I really like side swaps and I'm kind of more of a video trick kind of guy. I do all these hard tricks and you only do it once for a video, but I still haven't posted a video. So it's not really good to do those types of things. I think a much stronger practice session would be better with like the pyramid method of like when you're learning a trick. I think it's a lot better or that it'd be better for someone to learn a trick at practice and like learn the trick and then move on to a different trick while also practicing that. And then slowly your practice is a session of a bunch of different tricks instead of just a bunch of really hard tricks that you're never going to be able to perfect. I watch a lot of the YouTube jugglers and the YouTube videos, so I kind of base my practices off the tricks and their videos that I want to learn. Uh, and I think that starting with five and then progressing, so once you can do the trick with five, then do it with six, and when you can kind of do it with six, maybe try a round with seven. My practices are probably one of the least like helpful in terms of my juggling, because it's not structured at all. It's just I do what I want to do, and I get sidetracked really easily. And so it's not super like based on any uh, structure like maybe Phil's is. So. For learning it, I think it's really good to write down the side swap um, and then break it down with less balls. So if you're learning a five ball side swap, you do it with four balls and maybe even I know with three just to make sure you know the basics and then slowly work up when that's easy. Because I don't think you should move up a number until you can run it with the lower number. Seven four four with five balls, I think you should be able to do seven four four one. Uh, repeated for one side and then seven four four one four so it like repeats on both sides until it's like easy and you can run it for maybe 50 catches 40 rounds um, and then when you can run it for 40 rounds pretty much when you can always throw it up and I like to say if you're like casually talking to someone while you're doing a trick then it should be performance ready as long as you don't have trouble with it so I think yeah for, for performance you should be able to get probably 20 to 40 rounds of it pretty consistently regularly so you can put like four or five rounds in a routine. If you want to put a five club five up in a routine you should probably be able to get nine out of ten in one run like relatively consistently. The trick should be 80 percent solid before you put it into a routine maybe your finale is 50 percent because it's going to be you want your hardest trick to be last, of course. I think you should write down your practice and get structured and work on tricks that also build on other tricks. A lot of dedication to specific tricks and like writing those tricks down so that you have goals. And Phil talked to me a lot about this this weekend is he has a huge spread a spreadsheet of all these goals that he wants to complete in 2017. And I think that's really good because you can kind of go through and see your progress and mark how many catches or how many rounds you've done and it gives you an idea of what you should be working on instead of all these like crazy tricks you've seen in the video that you want to do. I mean, I'll be at pretty much every Midwestern festival. A few years ago, I went to like 12 or 13 in a year, so a lot of the Midwest fests. Um, I have like one video on YouTube with Jonah uh, that's on my channel. I have a lot of like, What's your channel? it's just Noah Schmeisner on YouTube. Um, Instagram account? Uh, I dot Noah guy. Uh, is my Instagram. I have some fun stuff on there. Uh, yeah, Facebook is just Noah Schmeisner. I don't post a lot of videos, but I would like to maybe post one this year. Uh, I think this year would be a good idea to post a video. I mean, I've never posted one and Phil's hounded me. A bunch of people have hounded me, but well, I just never got to. 10 years later, maybe they'll find it. Okay, yeah, hopefully.
Thanks so much. No Appreciate problem. It. Thank you guys.